Hello again, and thank you for joining us for this Wednesday's edition of Alaska Weather. I'm David Percy. First graphic today has a, or a breakup map showing the uh, current state of the rivers across the state. And uh, you see Northeast Bristol Bay there, got some mostly open along the two rivers there. Copper River, a good stretch of some open water. And the Tanana River, uh, kind of expanding there on the open area, some open, not completely there, upstream from uh, Fairbanks over toward, toward Delta. Of course, Yukon River still uh, pretty solid as well as the northern interior rivers as well. And uh, a little bit on the Kuskokwim River, looks like some open there near Nikolai. <coughs> Excuse me. Hazardous weather graphics, none. No watches, warnings, or advisories out uh, around the state, mainland Alaska, from the Arctic coast to the Gulf, looking good. No uh, watches, advisories for the uh, Panhandle, Bering Sea, and the Aleutians. So moving on to satellite imagery, you can see some bands of moisture, low pressure tracking slowly eastward across uh, Atka Island at midday today, and the front hanging up and weakening across the eastern Aleutians and Alaska Peninsula. Otherwise, good sunshine, Bristol Bay into south central Alaska, Got some clouds of the weak trough up over the western central interior areas. It's only moving uh, westward, and then uh, a little bit of an enhancement in the uh, clouds and scattered shower conditions there from the Seward Peninsula down into the lower Yukon River uh, Valley area and the eastern delta. Otherwise, there's some clouds there on the uh, northern panhandle, some isolated showers embedded in those clouds extending along the eastern North Gulf Coast, but amounts quite light, generally dry down to the south, eastern interior dry, and uh, some flurries eastern Arctic coast into the Brooks Range, but pretty light, and just some scattered developing afternoon shower activity up over the eastern interior areas. Mostly sunny skies and <clears throat> warm temperatures again here, about uh, typical late April weather with uh, increasing sunshine and uh, temperatures rising into the 50s in a lot of areas away from the coastline. Otherwise, some uh, isolated showers off the nor western North Gulf Coast and then that front uh, weakening front coming into the Alaska Peninsula with some periods of light rain there up to the Permaloffs and then showers over the Aleutians with the 994 millibar low north of the western Aleutians. But generally dry, as you can see, and some clearing there, uh, St. Lawrence Island up into the Chukchi Sea. And for tonight, uh, stays uh, fair there for the northern Bering Sea with light winds. Weak trough will produce or kick off a few isolated to widely scattered rain or snow showers there from the Kobuk Valley down into uh, Norton Sound and the northern Yukon Delta there. Otherwise dry conditions over the remainder of, of interior Alaska. Isolated light shower activity possible. Uh, up around Denali Park into the Talkeetnas, maybe the Chugach and along the North Gulf Coast. A little bit better chance over the Wrangell Mountains in the Southeast Copper River Basin to about Yakutat and along the north coast of the Panhandle with a very weak trough there. Otherwise dry for the Southeast Coast with light winds. And that front uh, continues hung up over the Alaska Peninsula, continues to weaken. Periods of light rain, drizzle and fog uh, for Port Hyden, Nelson Lagoon, Cold Bay, Falls Pass, King Cove up to the Pribilof Islands. Showers for Adak and Atka, and then increasing rain west of Adak and back across the western Aleutians, along with increasing winds with that next front swinging into the area there. And we'll see that tomorrow that front progresses eastward and weakens with a new low forming there right uh, just between Adak and Atka tomorrow afternoon. So look for periods of rain, fog, lower flying conditions from Atka Island eastward, uh, showers for the Fox Islands. Southeast flow uh, produces periods of light rain on the Pacific side of the Alaska Peninsula. And that trough uh, continues and actually kind of shifts westward a little bit there, close enough to keep a chance of showers over Norton Sound, Southern Seward Peninsula, and along the Yukon, Kuskokwim Delta, especially the coastline, Nunavak Island. Afternoon showers possible over the Kilbrook, Auckland Mountain areas and uh, Kodiak Island, risk of some afternoon showers. 
Panhandle basically dry, chance of showers though down south and over toward the border, but sunshine and uh, warm temperatures. All of interior Alaska, all the way up uh, to the Brooks Range. And then for Friday, look for increasing shower activity across southern Alaska. Any one of the taller clouds might develop into an isolated thunderstorm or two along the central and eastern Alaska range into uh, the Yukon there, but uh, that'll be the exception, definitely. Just look for scattered showers with uh, a little more in the way of cloudiness over southern Alaska. Increasing winds and eventually rain for Kodiak Island, Bristol Bay. Even the southwest interior winds and clouds will increase with increasing chances of showers. Rain for the Alaska Peninsula and wind there for the Pribilofs. Northward increasing winds, St. Lawrence Island. And generally dry with a risk of some shower activity over the southern panhandle. Lows for tonight, down near zero for the north slope in the Arctic coast, uh, around 10 for the Brooks Range, south of the Brooks Range, 20 to 30 for your lows, uh, some cases lower 30s in the lower to mid 30s, southwest interior, and uh, north Gulf Coast, upper 30s for the Panhandle. Highs tomorrow, 45 to 56 over the interior, south central Alaska as well, mid 40s Kodiak Island, lower 40s Alaska Peninsula in the Aleutians. Mid 40s to mid 50s for the Panhandle, mid teens for the Arctic coast, 20s for the North Slope, and 40s over the interior, Kobuk, Koyukuk Valley, Yukon Flats, followed by lows again, 0 to 5 above or 0 to 10 above for the North Slope and the Arctic coast on Friday morning. Teens in the Brooks Range, Ambler 33, your forecast low, 25 for Shishmer F31 for Savunga, otherwise staying above freezing there, Unalakleet, uh, Tanana, or actually uh, Galena and the southwest interior all in the 30s, 30 to 35 for south central Alaska. Highs 55 to 62 in the central interior, well into the 50s in the Susitna Valley. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. Moving on to flying weather, IFR to start the day up all over the Arctic coast and north slope, but the Brooks Range, all of interior Alaska looking VFR. Narrow band of uh, IFR north shore of the Seward Peninsula on down to western St. Lawrence Island, a band across the north central Bering Sea across the Pribilofs of the Alaska Peninsula, and then a more widespread area of IFR pushing into the western Aleutian southwest Bering Sea. Otherwise, Kodiak Island, marginal VFR along the coast, and that pushes up along the north Gulf Coast, northern Panhandle, marginal VFR, but the southern two thirds VFR. And for the afternoon, Still some marginal VFR, central southeast coast and along the north coast. Also uh, VF, marginal VFR right along the north Gulf Coast. You can see interior Alaska, all VFR from Bristol Bay, Kodiak Island, Prince William Sound, northward across the Brooks Range. Then that uh, lower condition continuing there from the north slope and the Arctic coast. Northern Bering Sea IFR on up into the north shore of the Seward Peninsula into Kotzebue Sound and then the uh, frontal boundary with some IFR pushing eastward across Atka Island and up into the southern Bering Sea. But behind the front, breaking out to VFR, Amchitka Island to Shimianat 2. And for the morning Friday, that front uh, doesn't make much northward progress, but it elongates eastward across uh, on Alaska Island to the Alaska Peninsula. And then IFR pretty well entrenched over the northern Bering Sea now north through the Bering Strait into Kotzebue Sound, the Chukchi Sea, and along the Arctic coast, but staying good over interior Alaska. Nothing but VFR until you get down to the north Gulf Coast. Possible marginal conditions and some AM marginal VFR in Cook Inlet, east side of Kodiak Island, Panhandle VFR. That continues through the afternoon. Southeast coast, all of interior Alaska, VFR. North of the Brooks Range, marginal VFR, lingering IFR there over the Chukchi Sea and along the coast of the Seward Peninsula, but marginal in Norton Sound. Some IFR right along the southwest coast into Togiak Bay, maybe into the uh, southwest Auckland, Kilbrook Mountainous areas there, Nunavak Island, IFR. Pribilofs marginal, then some areas of VFR breaking out over the Aleutians, extending down from Bristol Bay. Marginal VFR, western Aleutians, some IFR there, Akiak, Sitkanak, and uh, along the Pacific side of the Alaska Peninsula. And for passes, all VFR. Brooks Range, Anatovic, Adigan, looking really good. Seedlings visibility is unlimited for Lee Clark, Merrill, and Rainey. Windy, good VFR flying, Isabel, VFR. Mintasta also looking VFR. 
Tanita will be VFR tomorrow as well port as will Portage. Good VFR either approach Chilkoot and White's VFR. Freezing levels about 2,000 feet to start the day out across southern Alaska into the Panhandle and uh, 2,000 feet nudging northward there into the west central Aleutians and the surface just south of St. Uh, Matthew and Nunavak Islands cutting across Togiak Bay to near King Salmon up across the inland areas of southern Alaska but north of the Panhandle. Icing, a couple of bands out west. Uh, the uh, heavier one with the considerable moderate rime areas of there pushing into the central Aleutians and lifting north of the western Aleutians uh, during the afternoon hours and then some isolated moderate in the band there along the Alaska Peninsula southward and then lighter amounts in the Bering Sea there that may extend up into Norton Sound and then just some scattered mixed icing possible eastern North Gulf Coast and over the uh, northern Panhandle and taking a look at the jet stream upper level low eastern norton sound northeast 60 to 65 knots northeast winds 60 to 65 knots western arctic coast turn northerly into the bering strait and then west northwest 60 to 65 across the southwest interior into kodiak island southern cook inlet southeast 60 knots across the alaska peninsula stronger northwest 100 knot winds there over the western aleutians otherwise light and variable over eastern and interior and panhandle 9,000 feet pretty light winds across the state a little breezy out over the western aleutians westerlies 45 knots there and then the 3,000 foot wind flow chart showing easterlies maybe up to, uh, let's see, possibly 25 or 30 knots there on the western Arctic coast, supporting the small craft advisories in the marine zones. Otherwise, uh, not too bad. Uh, light variable winds, panhandle, all of interior Alaska, south maybe 35 knots over the Alaska Peninsula. Turbulence, moderate chop, Alaska Peninsula, central Aleutians. When I first started working here in the early 90s, this is where the glacier was. I mean, where we're walking right now would have been a pile of gravel that had been pushed up by the glacier, and then we would have had 100 to 200 foot high cliffs of ice right here. And uh, as you can see, that's changed quite a bit. And if you look at that in two dimensions, you can sort of see the terminus used to be here, now it's back there. That gives you one measure. What that kind of two-dimensional look doesn't show is how much mass has been lost, that the glacier has just sort of deflated. These 200 foot cliffs of ice have disappeared and pulled back to this gentle sloping glacier you see now. When I was working in, in Kenai Fjords National Park, uh, I, I used the topographic maps to navigate where I was and I realized that the uh, mapping of the glaciers was really off. The, Glaciers had receded a lot. There were new rivers and lakes that were establishing where the ice used to be or should have been according to the maps. And so then I, I did a study on this and found out that we had a 5% loss of glacier ice mass in the Kenai Fjords area between 1950 and 1985. Big change. You know, one of the most compelling things we do though to document glacier change is simply take photographs. Uh, we've had repeat photography projects here at the park. They may not give you the most accurate data in terms of how much mass or real specific measurements, but what they do give you is a visual representation that can't be argued with. I mean, it just, it really requires no interpretation. Understanding what's happening, understanding these processes, and p possibly being able to predict what's going to happen in the future is the best that we can do, and, and that requires science and research. There's considerable research on climate change in Alaska. The most significant, I would say right now, is the Natural Resources Inventory and Monitoring Program, which is looking at change across a wide variety of vital signs or, or indicators. Kenai Fjords National Park is actually a pretty good representation of what's going on globally with regards to glacier ice retreat. There have been studies showing that uh, mountain glaciers uh, are retreating all over the planet. There are probably over, well over 90 percent of the glaciers are in retreat status. There are a few that are advancing uh, and some are holding uh, you know, their 
terminus point. But Akina Fjords, tidewater glaciers are retreating more dramatically, but even the land-based glaciers in the terminus positions are retreating. It's pretty common for all the mountain glaciers. The big mountain glaciers in uh, Wrangell St. Elias National Park, they're mostly in retreat too. We're, we're really entering an interesting phase where, where the, what we call the cryosphere, the ice on the planet is, is melting. You know, in the more immediate past, um, it's clear that since the Pleistocene, glaciers have been retreating. So the, the idea that glaciers retreat is nothing, uh, is no revelation. They've been retreating from across North America for the last 10,000 years. What appears to have changed and what has people's attention is the rate at which they're retreating. In the case of Exit Glacier, you know, we have scientists who've been looking at it. Um, we have evidence that the glaciers left behind, or we can track that retreat for about the last 200 years. And we can say with confidence that in the last decade, that rate has increased. Terminus mapping is um, a great way to map a small portion of the ice field. We come out twice a year and we use a GPS to walk the edge of the terminus and map this, the farthest extent of Exit Glacier. And that allows us to see what type of changes are occurring over the winter accumulation period and the summer ablation period. With that data, that can help us um, as, we, as we witness these changes within the ice field, we can hopefully be able to correlate that with the weather data that we have. You know, when you look at an ice field that's 750 square miles, when you look at a glacier that towers hundreds of feet high, you get a sense of permanence. You think these things are massive. They're somehow a permanent sort of feature. And yet, uh, in a very short period of time, in, in a matter of a couple of decades, we've seen dramatic change in those things. At Exit Glacier, we have a time-lapse camera set up on the glacier that allows us to take a couple photos every single day and then to put that sequence of photos into a video where we can see changes of the glacier and the vegetation phenology throughout an entire year. Virtually all the glaciers in Alaska are receding. Some glaciers are moving forward. That's not an indication that they're actually growing in size. It's just the rate at which they're slipping down the mountain. In some cases, some of these glaciers are receding back up onto land uh, and so they're producing less less ice. When you change the glacier systems, you're changing habitat for marine mammals and other, other wildlife. And the populations of harbor seals have dropped dramatically in the fjords. In 1980, shortly after the establishment of the park, in Islick Bay we had maybe 1,500 harbor seals. Nowadays, you know, it's a few hundred. In Arctic environments, much of the sunlight that reaches the earth bounces back because it hits snow and reflects off into space, or ice on the ocean and reflects off into space. That's the albedo effect. When the, when the snow thaws and instead you have rock or vegetation, or when the ice thaws and you have transparent ocean, the sunlight will convert to other wavelengths. It'll convert essentially to warmth. That does not bounce back into the atmosphere as much. So consequently, you get a warming of the ocean, you get a warming of the ground, you get a thawing of frozen soils or permafrost, you get a more rapid thawing of sea ice. So once the ice and once the snow is off of the surface, the rate of warming increases considerably. If you're driving out to Exit Glacier, you'll actually start to see signs along the side of the road that have dates on them. Visitors sometimes are confused, they think they're elevations or something, until they get up to the glacier and realize, oh, those were all date signs along the road that were telling me when the glacier was there. Another thing that's been happening in the Exit Glacier area in recent years is this uh, flooding that comes at a time we're not used to. We're used to having maybe some flooding in the fall when we have a lot of heavy rain. This has suddenly been some flooding that's coming in the middle of the summer, usually not associated with precipitation events it's associated with warmer weather and melting. When you walk down uh, one of our trails that leads to Exit Glacier, there are a number of ways to get out there, but what used to be the main route is, uh, is no longer really the main route because of the way the glacier has changed. So this main route to the glacier used to provide dramatic views of the glacier as you walk towards it. In fact, there is a, a large kiosk built at the end of this trail for people to stop and rest and enjoy the view of the glacier. Now, if they stop and rest at this kiosk, people think, why did the park put a kiosk here? Because it looks out at some shrubs. 
Heather's no glacier within view anymore. The way we solve big problems like this is not all at once. It's, there's a thing called the Sokolov's wedges, and you just take a little bite of the pie, one sliver at a time. So we try to do incremental changes. When we talk to people about our concerns about climate change, about the changes that are happening to the glacier, uh, we also want to leave them with some idea of what we're doing uh, to, to mitigate some of the effects of climate change. For example, here at the park, as we retire vehicles out of our fleet, we try to replace them with electric vehicles or hybrid vehicles. We've done things like uh, at the Exit Glacier Nature Center, helping to sort of experiment and install um, a cutting edge fuel cell as opposed to running some traditional uh, power source out there that relies on some sort of more greenhouse producing gas. My main hope for the future is that people get the message that the planet is changing fairly rapidly in places, particularly places like Kenai Fjords National Park. Uh, and that it's, it is, we think, uh, there's good evidence it's a result of atmospheric changes which are measured uh, in terms of uh, human inputs into the atmosphere. The rapid rate at which these glaciers are changing um, now offers us the opportunity to talk about this place as a way of looking into the future. In a lot of parts of the country, climate change issues are a little more subtle. And we can point here and say, look how fast this is changing. This is what uh, you know the future holds for perhaps a lot of us uh, and a lot of the planet as the uh, climate continues to change. I'm optimistic that people and nature will adapt to change. But my expectation is that change will occur. Time will tell. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back. Coastal water forecast. Small craft advisories for the south coast of the Panhandle for Friday afternoon. East winds 20 to 25 knots, 7 foot seas. Lighter winds up north. There you can see east 10 to 15 knots with 4 to 5 foot seas. Uh, northern central inside waters, light north to northwest winds at 10 knots. And for Clarence Strait, winds will be southeast of 15 knots. And moving on to the uh, or Thursday for South Central Alaska, light variable winds for uh, light variable winds at 10 knots with three foot seas. Prince William Sound, light variable winds at 10 knots with seas at two feet. And for Cook Inlet, south to southwest breezes, 15 knots. Small craft advisory result for Kamishak Bay, expecting the winds to kick up to 25 knots out of the southeast, but the Barren Islands, southeast winds 15 knots. And for Friday, Prince William Sound, winds will be southeast at 10 knots with two foot seas. North Gulf Coast, southeast winds 15 to 20 knots with four to five foot seas. And for Northern Cook Inlet, light variable wind conditions with slight seas. And south of the Forelands, uh, <clears throat> east winds of 15 knots. Otherwise, look for an increase in the winds there for Kamishak Bay. Small craft advisories, 30 knot easterlies in the forecast. Same thing for uh, Barren Islands. Small craft advisories, southeast winds at 30 knots. For Kodiak Island, east southeast winds tomorrow, 15 to 20 knots, seas to 5 feet. Small craft advisories for the Alaska Peninsula, southeast winds 25 knots, seas 8 feet. Bristol Bay, southeast winds 25 knots with 4 foot seas. Uh, windier conditions moving in for Friday with that uh, pretty potent front approaching the area from the west. Gale warnings for the Alaska Peninsula, south to southeast winds, 35 knots with uh, gale warnings for Kodiak Island for uh, northeast to southeast winds, 30 to 35 knots. And Bristol Bay gale warnings, east winds, 40 knots with 8 foot seas. For the Fox Islands, uh, Thursday, south to southeast winds, 20 to 25 knots. And for Adak and Atka, south to southeast winds, 25 knots, with seas up to 10 feet. And then west-southwest winds from Amchitka Island to Shimia at 30 knots with 12-foot seas. For Friday, from uh, Shimia to Kiska, winds will be northwest at 25 knots with 15-foot seas. Amchitka Island looking at west winds at 30 knots with 15-foot seas as well. Adak and Atka, Yale warnings, southwest winds 30, 35 knots. And for the Fox Island small craft advisories for south to southwest winds 25 to 30 knots with 10 to 15 foot seas. 
For the southwest coast, southeast winds on Thursday, 20 to 25 knots with 5 to 6 foot seas. Pribilof Islands, winds southeast 15 knots and east 20 knot winds in the forecast for St. Matthew Island. Small craft advisories for St. Lawrence Island for northeast winds at 25 knots and a breeze of 20 knots out of the east for Norton Sound with seas up to 4 feet. Outlook for Friday, Norton Sound, east winds 20 knots, seas 4 feet. Small craft advisories for St. Lawrence Island, east winds 25 knots. And then we've got uh, small craft advisories for the Yukon Delta Coast, east winds at 30 knots, turn northeast at 30 knots as they get out towards St. Matthew Island. Small craft advisories for St. Paul and St. George, east winds 25 knots. And gale warnings for the Cuscombe Delta Coast, south of Nunavak Island for east winds at 35 knots. We've got brisk wind advisories for the uh, Arctic coast, the entire stretch from Cape Thompson all the way to Demarcation Point for east winds sustained 25 knots. And then from uh, Cape Thompson to Wales, winds will be northeast at 15 knots. Those will swing around to the southeast at 15 knots on Friday. Uh, lighter winds elsewhere, 10 knots out of the east, Cape Thompson to Cape Beaufort. And then the uh, Arctic coast looking at easterly winds at 15 to 20 knots. For tonight, maybe some scattered isolated rain or snow showers with a weak trough there extending from the uh, oh, Koyakuk, Kobuk Valleys down into the Yukon Delta, but amounts will be light and the showers will be very scattered. Weakening front brings some rain into the Alaska Peninsula and continues for the Pribilofs, becoming intermittent. Stronger front brings wind and rain to the western Aleutians. Isolated showers over the mountainous terrain of uh, south central Alaska and the North Gulf Coast pretty much dry for the panhandle. Thursday, sunny and mild over your eastern and central interior all the way up to the north slope. Chance of showers out over the southwest part of the state. Rain in the Aleutians in Alaska Peninsula. And then a stronger, larger low moves into the Bering Sea on Friday. Again with uh, small craft advisories and gale force winds in advance of that front with rain spreading onto the southwest coast. <laughs> These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating.